Hello, in this episode of To The Point Code, we are going to look at how to create a database using MySQL and connect it to our PHP project. This is part of our PHP CRUD attendance list series. Now in the previous episode, we wrote some code for the front end of our application. We created the attendance entry form and also an attendance list. Now let's turn our focus to creating a database for this application. So we do that by visiting phpMyAdmin. First of all, we can do that through the browser or go to the control panel which should always be running in the background and at the MySQL section, click on admin. This will lead us to the phpMyAdmin interface. So on the phpMyAdmin page, we go to the left panel and create a new database. For the name of our database, let's call it php underscore attendance underscore crad underscore db this is quite a long name but we want it to be descriptive enough once we've given it a name we go ahead to create it so we go ahead to create our first table we'll call our table attendance and it will have five columns once we've done that you can click on go now the first column will be the id this will just identify each row in the table. To have a type of int, we will leave the length blank and we will check the auto increment option. And we will maintain the primary option, which will make it the primary key. Now the second column will be the index number. This is what we will actually take from the input field. Now we are not going to make any calculations with this field, so we can make it a string, which is a varchar. That's a variable character. I'll give it a length of 15 and that will be all. The next column will be full name. It will be varchar as well. And I'll give it a length of let's say 200. Our next column will be the email column. That will also be varchar. And I'll give it a length of let's say 100. The last column will be the time of arrival. So we call it arrival time. That will have a type of date time because to be storing both date and the time because we want to keep track of the date of reporting and also the time as well. For that, we just set the date time and leave all the other columns blank. Once we've done that, we can go ahead to save our table. Now we see that our table has been created. Now browsing the structure, we see that there is a little key attached to the ID. This shows that it is the primary key. That is, every value in this column must be unique and it also increments by itself. So now we've been able to create our database using MySQL. Now how about connecting it to our PHP file? Now let's click on the server we see in the top here. Once we've done that, let's go to user account. Now we want to take note of the details that we have here the username, the host name, and the password. We'll make use of the last one. You can go ahead to also add a new user and make use of the details if you want to create a user with a password, which is the recommended way to go. So let's go ahead to create one. We just call him attendance admin. For the host name, that will be localhost. Now the password, I'll say attendance. And you have to retype the password. And I'll just give all the privileges to this user. Once you've done that, we'll click on go. So now we see that you have added another user. Now clicking on the user account again, we see that our attendance admin has been added and the host name is localhost and there is a password. Now let's go back to our code editor. Now inside the code editor, let's go to our config directory. Inside the config directory, let's go to the db.php file. Now inside this file, we want to create a few constants. This will be the details of our connection with the database. 
first of all we need to put some php tags now the first constant will be our database host if you don't know about this define this is to create constants in php and it will have a value of localhost The second one will be the name of the user. Now remember that our user is called attendance admin. The next one will be the password. That will be attendance. Our last constant will be the name of our database. Remember, we called our database PHP Attendance CRAD DB with the underscores. Now, let's make the connection to our database. So, we create a connection variable and we we'll make use of my SQLI underscore connect. So we will pass the credentials to it. First of all, we will pass the name of the host. Secondly, we will pass the name of the user. Followed by the password. And lastly, we will pass the name of the database. Once we've done that, you have to check if the connection was successful. If the connection is not successful, we exit the script. In addition to that, we can concatenate the actual error that occurred by using my SQLI underscore connect error. Don't worry about this because it's not a typo. That's the name of the function. Once we've done that, we save the db.php file. Now inside the index.php file, we head to the top of the file. At the top, we create another PHP tag. Now inside the PHP tag, we require the db.php file we just created. Now once we have done that, if we save and head to the browser and refresh without getting any error, it means that our database has connected successfully. Refreshing, we see that there is no error. Better still, we can go ahead to echo a message. So, after the if lock, let's add an else. Now, once we save and go back to the browser and refresh, we see that connection successful is being displayed. Now we won't need this connection successful string, so let's go back and delete it. So we've been able to create our database and connect it to our PHP file. In the next episode, we'll be looking at how to insert into the database using our form and also fetch from the database into our attendance list. And that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.